Sweetbriar College was founded in 1901 with money and land donated by Indiana Fletcher Williams. Indiana, in turn, received thousands of acres and an inheritance from her father, Elijah Fletcher, who died in 1858. Over the next decade, Indiana had married James Henry Williams and had a child, Maria Williams, also known as Daisy. Unfortunately, both were to die before their time. Daisy died unexpectedly at age 16 in 1884 from a lung disease that she inherited from her father. James Henry died five years later of cirrhosis of the liver in 1889. Although she only lived to age 16, Daisy left a remarkable mark on the history of the college. After Daisy's death, her mother Indiana began planning for a suitable memorial to her daughter. First, a marble gravestone was erected in the family cemetery, located about a mile from the plantation house on Monument Hill. The inscription hints at the despair felt by her parents upon their loss. Dedicated in love to the sweet remembrance of dear Daisy by her sorrowing parents, James Henry and Indy Fletcher. And in Latin it reads, rest in peace. In addition to her marble marker, Daisy is commemorated at the base of her family's monument, a tall granite obelisk topped by a very large statue of a woman holding a cross, a metaphor for faith. An inscription is carved at the base of this statue, in loving remembrance of Daisy, only child of I.F. and J.H. Williams, born in Sweetbriar September 10, 1867, died January 2, 1884. To this day, the Sweetbriar community celebrates Daisy's life with a memorial parade to her gravesite each September, led by a bagpiper, carrying daisies, and ending at her grave. Soon after Daisy's death, Indiana began to plan for a more permanent memorial. In the end, Indiana decided to donate money to found a college for women in honor of her dead daughter. Indiana expected that women attending this institution would be prepared to become useful members of society. By the time of her death, Indiana owned about 8,000 acres and donated over a million dollars for the creation of Sweetbriar College. Today, several academic departments are engaged in a search for the archaeological and historical remains of Daisy. This research includes separating out fact from fiction and original artifacts from copies. As a case in point, Daisy's white marble gravestone is touching, but not original. Daisy's first gravestone was vandalized soon after her death. When her father heard about the damage, he was furious. Oh, what an act of sacrilegious impiety. What a fiendish, mad, and dastardly onslaught on all that poor human nature, even at its worst, holds sacred desecrating the grave of a spotless child, a maiden so young, taken so early and from so much, and done in such wanton wickedness. Fortunately, other artifacts are authentic and provide a window into her brief life. The best insight into her daily life is recorded in her own voice through a series of diary entries. On the 1st of January, 1880, when Daisy was 12, she began a diary in which she wrote diligently for the remainder of the year. The diary covers the minutia of everyday life on a postbellum southern plantation. Wednesday, April 7th, 1880. Had asparagus for dinner and apple pies. She regularly notes the condition of the livestock and crops on the farm. Her favorite animals included Frisk the cat, Bounce her pony, and Watch the dog. In a modern day twist on these naming conventions, Sweetbriar's president has a dog named Daisy. Monday, May 3rd, 1880. Much warmer today. I knew all my lessons and finished Petal's French grammar. I walked out in the woods with Mary and found some pretty pink little flowers, red pinks and wild honeysuckle. There were a few bluelets and some wild gooseberry blooms. I went fishing and caught two fish. In the early 1900s, the plantation landscape was altered to accommodate the construction of a liberal arts college for women, Sweetbriar College. But pieces of the 19th century landscape remain. For example, on the grounds of the historic plantation house, we find Daisy's garden. Although the location may not be accurate, we know from Daisy's diary that she was an avid gardener. Friday, April 9th, 1880. There was a shower last night. It had not rained for two weeks. I went in the garden before breakfast and picked some lilies of the valley. They have just commenced to bloom. There are a great many lovely jonquils in the vegetable garden. They commenced to bloom the day before yesterday. The lilacs are all out. Daisy also played the harp. 
Daisy's diary entries may have been composed at her desk in her room. After Daisy's death, 19th century visitors commented that Indiana left Daisy's room untouched and even kept Bounce's saddle at the ready. Today, the Williams home is used as a residence for the president of Sweetbriar College. However, Daisy's room still contains a 19th century furniture set that may have belonged to the young girl. From this tower room, Daisy could keep an eye on her flowers, pets, and the ever-changing landscape. Throughout her diary, Daisy refers to the servants working on the farm. These individuals included Martha Penn Taylor, her nursemaid, Nelson, a farm worker, Ida, a washerwoman, Rosa, the family cook, and Signora Hollins, Rosa's niece and Daisy's playmate. When Signora was in her 90s, in 1951, she reminisced about her childhood playmate. She recalled playing in the boxwoods, riding Daisy's pony, fishing in a nearby pond, and playing with Daisy's toys. Friday, September 10th, 1880. Today is my birthday. I am 13 years old. Mama excuses my practicing and my lessons today. We cooked breakfast in the new kitchen. It did not take any time to cook it. Mr. Stevens is building the pillars for the porch. I have been in the orchard for a basket of apples. Frisk was washed yesterday. The bell fleurs apples are ripe right now. I have not practiced today. Uncle Singh said I'm some lamb. We had it for dinner. I have a very nice birthday. The diary also mentions weekly visits to her Aunt Elizabeth, who lived nearby at Mount San Angelo. Daisy calls her Aunt Lilybell. Tuesday, November 2nd, 1880. Flora and Tom have a bad cough. I wrote over to Aunt Lilybell's on Bird by myself took over the first kiss to play. She lent me the blue Danube waltzes. It was so warm we ate on the front porch. Thursday, November 4th, 1880. Papa went to the courthouse yesterday. General Garfield is elected president. I filled both the lamps and put a wick in one of them. Other than Daisy's gravestones and the museum collection of toys and clothing, are there any other artifacts that remain from Daisy's life? One possibility is a set of hitching posts today located along a modern lane. Indiana installed a hitching post behind their house so that Daisy could tie up her pony nearby after a ride. After Daisy's death, Indiana insisted that the post remain. But after Indiana's death, it was probably moved. Perhaps one of the hitching posts standing today originally belonged to Bounds. Students and faculty continue to research the lives of the 19th century community at Sweetbriar. The results of these projects can be viewed on campus at the Sweetbriar Museum and online on departmental websites.